Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be doing a problem for some of the beginners to leet code questions. We don't just want to solve the medium and the hard questions, we also want to do some for people who are just starting out. So today we're going to be solving leet code problem 1207, unique number of occurrences. Given an array of integers array, return true if the number of occurrences of each value in the array is unique or false otherwise. So let's look at a basic example where we have this input array 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 3. So how frequently does each element occur? So there's a 1 here, there's a 2, and there's a 3. So how many 1s do we have? Well, let's count them. We have 1 here, we have 1 here, and we have 1 here. So there are 3 1s, right? How many 2s do we have? Well, for the 2, we have 2 2s, right? And for the 3, we have 1 3. So are all of these counts unique? Yes, none of these counts are duplicates, right? There's a three, there's a two, there's a one. So for this one, um, we would return true here because they're all unique. What about this example where we have one and two? So obviously there's two numbers here, one and two. How many times do we see a one? Well, we see it once. And the two, we also see it once. So since two numbers have the same uh, frequency, obviously we would return false here because they are not unique. So. How can we solve this question? This question is an excellent example of how to actually use a uh, the basic data structures that you're going to be using a lot in lead code. So what we want to do is kind of let's bring back our um, array here. Let's paste it back in. So we have our input array. So what we want to do here is we want to keep track of the count of each element, which means that we're going to have to go through our array and count each element as we see it. So the best data structure to actually store this is going to be a hash map because we can keep as the value here, uh, sorry, as the key here, we can keep the number. So what are our numbers, right? We have one, we have two and three. And then for the value of each key, we can keep its frequency and we can increment this frequency as we go along. So, you know, first we would see a one. So let's kind of just build the hash map as we go through. And oops, I lost my pen here. So we would, you know, build our hash map as we go. So we're going to go from left to right. So we've we see a one. So we see a one, it's not in the hash map. So we're going to add it. And obviously, we've seen one of them. So its count should be one. Now we see a two, it's not in our hash map. So we're going to add it. So it has a frequency of one as well. And we're also going to see another two. So now we can update the frequency of our two, it's going to be a two. We now see another one. So we can update this frequency to be two. We now see our third one, so we can update it to three. We see our first three, which is not in the hash map, so we're going to add it to the hash map and set its count to one. So now we have the frequencies of each item, but how do we actually figure out whether these are unique? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to use the set data structure. And remember, a set data structure will tell us, uh, it will get rid of any duplicates for us. So if we put in these values into our set, three, two, one, and we get back the same number of elements, that means that they were all unique, right? Because if a set removes uh, non unique elements, then if they're all unique, we should just get back the same numbers we put in. So if we put three numbers in, and they're all unique, we should get three numbers back. So that's how we're going to figure out whether our uh, values here are actually unique, we're going to put them into a set and say is the count of these numbers does it equal to the count of however many uh, keys we had in our um, oh, sorry, the value does it equal to the number of values we had here? If it does, then that means they're unique. Otherwise, then it means they're not unique. And therefore, we want to return false. So let's now go to the code editor and um, type this up. We're now in the code editor, let's type this up. So remember that we need to get the count of each of the elements in our array here. So we want to use a hash map like we talked about. So let's define that. So we're going to get say count dictionary. And here we're actually going to learn about a new data structure. If you know about it, great. If you don't know about it, we're going to teach you today about the default dictionary. So what the default dictionary is, is it's a dictionary, except if a key doesn't exist, it will basically initialize um, that key and give it a value of whatever the default is. That's why it's called a default dictionary. If a key doesn't exist, instead of throwing a key error, it's actually just going to set the value to whatever you do the default. So we're actually going to just set it to zero. And the way that you do that is typically just by passing int here. It's a little bit of like a, a trick here to actually just get it. So you can kind of just memorize if you want to get counts, 
you just use a default dict uh, with an integer, right? You could also have a list here. Uh, you could have a set. You could have another dictionary. It doesn't matter. You just need some sort of callable here um, to actually define the default dictionary. So what this is going to do is if an element is not in our dictionary, it's just going to add it and then set its count to zero. So you'll see why that's important in a second. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over each of the elements in our array. So we're going to do for item in array we're basically going to say count dictionary. So we want to add the key to the dictionary. And remember that if the count is not in there, it's going to set it to zero. And if it's in there, then what we want to do is just increment it by one. So what's going to happen here is if it's not in there, it's going to set it to zero. And then we're going to increment it by one or it's already in there. And then we can just increment it by one. So what this does is it actually saves you from saying something like if item in dictionary, then we're going to say count dictionary of item, we're going to add to it. Otherwise, then we want to say count dictionary of item basically equals one, right? So look how you can basically write it in one line instead of having to write four. So that's what a default dictionary does in case you didn't know. So after this loop ends, we'll have the frequency of all of our elements. Now we need to actually see if they're unique. And I told you that the way we're going to do this is with a set. So we're going to say items and we're just going to say set here. And what we're going to do is we could just put all of the items into a set, but that would actually require us to put them all in there. We can actually go item by item. And the second we find an item that's actually not unique, then we can actually just end it early because we know that um, we don't have unique occurrences. So what we're going to do is essentially we are going to say, OK, so for uh, let's see for the frequency in count dictionary dot values. So dot values will actually give us the values of our um, you know, dictionary here. So for each frequency, we're going to say if the frequency in. So if it's in our items um, set, then what we're going to do is we're going to return false because we know that we've seen that frequency before. Therefore, the frequencies aren't unique. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to say items dot add and we're going to add it to our set. So we're going to add the frequency and we're going to continue forward. So either we're going to return false because the frequencies aren't unique or we can simply return true at the end because they're all unique. And that's how you solve the question. So let's now uh, run this. Make sure I didn't make any silly syntax um, item. Let's see. Count dict. Oh, oops, I left it as a list because I was giving you guys the example. Apologies there. It should be an integer. There we go. Perfect. So now we submit this and it's accepted. Cool. All right, so last thing we need to do is actually talk about the time and space complexity here. So for the time, what is the time complexity? Well, we know that we have to build our uh, dictionary here. So that will require us going over each of the elements in array, which is going to cost big O of n time, where again, um, n, uh, n equals number of items in array, right? Then what we're going to do is basically go over all of the items in our uh, count dictionary and, you know, add them to our set. So in the worst case, they're all unique, which means that we'd have to go over every element, which means that it's going to be big O of n as well. So what this means is that we have something like two times big O of n, right? But asymptotically, we don't actually care about these constants here. So we can actually just say that this is big O of n. And in the space, similarly, we need to basically store our uh, items here. Um, so in the worst case, obviously, there's going to be uh, unique items. So each item in our array is going to be unique. So that means that we need one key for each item, which means that the length of our count dictionary will be big O of n. Similarly, for the item set, we can also say that the frequencies could be all unique. So that could be big O of n as well. So this is, again, going to be two times big O of n which is just going to be big O of n. And that is how you solve the problem. 
relatively simple one. Like I said, this is more of an introductory question on how do you actually, um, you know, use your basic data structures, AKA in this case, your dictionary and your set. This is a good problem, not too difficult, very straightforward, uh, more of like a mechanical, can you actually use the data structures properly uh, to solve the question? So this is what easy questions are for, learning the basics of your data structures before you move on to the more complex ones where you actually start integrating some algorithms into it. So. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found these easier ones uh, helpful for those of you that are actually just starting out on the lead code journey. I know it seems quite scary at first, but don't worry. Um, you know, give it time, keep disciplined with your preparation, and you know, eventually you'll be working at Google. As uh, crazy as that sounds, but you know, if you stick with it, that's what happens. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.